So, how many of you believe you've produced waste today? Please raise your hands. That should be all of you. We had lunch, we had breakfast, there was food. Some women maybe made a trip to the restroom, disposed of a sanitary napkin. So we've all produced waste at some point today. Now we might not have as intimate a relationship with waste as this family, which were photographed by an artist in the US, surrounded by one week's worth of waste that they produced. But out of curiosity, how many of you have ever wondered where does my waste go? Anyone? All right, that's no one. Oh, I, I, I see a few oddballs. But um, hopefully today we will change that. But before we do that, perhaps a better question to ask is what could happen with your waste? Now in India, about 60% of the waste we produce is organic material. This can be fed straight into a biogas plant, which can produce electricity or fuel such as CNG that goes into transportation systems or LPG which is what powers our cook stores. If you took a city like Bangalore and all of the organic waste that we produce and fed all of it in to a biogas plant, you would be able to generate enough power to light up 24,000 homes. Just take a minute and absorb that. Better yet, absorb this fact that if you took all of this organic waste converted into CNG, you would be able to power up 780,000 CNG buses. And we had an incredible group of interns from Columbia this summer who did some more math for me. And they tell me that this could actually fuel 178% of the daily trips that buses in Bangalore make every single day. Now there's another question. How many of you believe this is happening today? Anyone? So that's my question. We're a country that can put a mission to Mars for a less per kilometer cost than what it costs to take an auto rickshaw across Ahmedabad. Why can't this be a reality? So today, I really want to ask you to think about perhaps one of the most invisible systems that each one of us participate in every single day, and that is how we manage our waste. What I want you to do is to start asking the right questions. And I guarantee you, you will not look at waste the same way ever again. In fact, I can guarantee you, you will be itching to find ways to convert your waste into compost, energy, recycled products. And the reason for this is because you will want to know the question, uh, excuse me, you will want to know the answer to the question, where is my waste going? Unfortunately, today, this is your answer. Your waste is going to a landfill. And let me tell you, a landfill is nothing fancy. It is just an open piece of land where waste from cities is collected and dumped. There is no processing happening. It's just lying there. What's worse is that these people, who are often called rag pickers, are the only ones doing the majority of recycling in our country. They sift through hazardous and contaminated waste that we have produced in order to feed themselves. And as a result, you and I cause rag pickers' life expectancy to be 39 years. And this is actually a global phenomenon. Almost 30% of the world's population still does not have access to daily collection of their garbage. And about 42% of the world's population still is not able to access controlled disposal facilities. This, by the way, is my most favorite graph that I wish I could go and put in every minister and bureaucrat's office in India who believes that, hey, we can just go to a developed country and copy paste a solution for our waste management problems. We can't because there is no country in the world that has a recycling economy. In this graph by the UN Environment Program, you will find that the blue sections are representing the amount of waste that is landfilled. The yellow is incineration, dark green is composting, and light green is recycling. Please note, landfilling and incineration are still the primary form 
of recycling or, excuse me, of dealing with waste anywhere in the world. But I truly believe that India is uniquely positioned by the, in many senses, by the constraints that we have, whether it's population growth, restricted land access, but most importantly, with the power of democracy to really create the foundation for, for recycling economies across the world. And I think it's high time we do this, mostly because just a few months ago, the landfill that receives one third of Mumbai's daily waste, and that is, by the way, one third, 3,700 tons, is only a third of what Mumbai produces in a, on a daily basis. This landfill caught on fire and spread carcinogens across the city uh, for about four days. And I think about 70 schools were shut during that time because we had one of the worst air qualities in the city's history. Landfilling does not only contribute carcinogens, it is also a source for groundwater contamination, produces about 6% of greenhouse gas emissions, and causes a slew of diseases. What's interesting is today we account for landfilling as being, or waste management in general, as accounting for 6% of greenhouse gas emissions. But I want you to look at this graph more closely and look at how on this chart all the other industries responsible for greenhouse gases also produce waste. So if we actually look at responsible waste management across these industries, you could, and, and we also look at preventing the creation of waste, you could actually reduce greenhouse gas emissions up to 20% with better waste management across the world. These are the sustainable development goals for 2030. Unfortunately, waste management didn't make it on there. Again, invisible system, right? It didn't make it on there as a direct goal. However, it can improve about 11 of the 17 goals if we move towards creating recycling economies. And this is the stat that really got my co-founder and I to start our company. Because we just think this is stupid. And someone had to fix it. 85% of India's waste can be recycled. But 90% sits in landfills today. Of course, before we could go off and build a solution, we had to ask ourselves, why is this happening? And there are three main reasons. The first is, Given that organic waste is predominantly the majority of the waste that we produce, we need destinations that are not landfills, such as biogas plants, to send this waste to. We don't have enough of them. Second issue, there is absolutely no logistics or supply chain management of any kind of waste collection, transportation, or processing operations. Last, but very, very important, we have an inability to manage behavior to allow for us to manage this entire supply chain. And this is all while we have some pretty aggressive targets for renewable energy. By 2030, we must produce 40% of our country's electricity from renewable energy. Of that, we've of course accounted for solar and wind. But guess what? Waste to energy was mentioned in this report only twice. We're ignoring one of our most promising sources of renewable energy. When it comes to supply chain management, it baffles me that somehow everybody understands, yes, supply and demand have to match in real time to have the grid function for all of us to have electricity. However, we somehow don't realize that, like today, we, we had a big gathering here today, everybody had lunch. Obviously, someone's going to have to dispatch an extra truck to pick up the extra barrels of waste that all of us produced. How do we know this? There is zero technology being used to tell us about the quantity, let alone the quality of waste, its location, whether it has gotten picked up, and where it was taken. Finally, this is the most important criteria that we realized is necessary for us to have the potential to recycle and have a recycling economy, and that is segregation at source. So this is actually a new habit that all of us need to form, but it's actually not as daunting as it sounds. All you need to do is separate your waste into three streams. The first one is organic. 60% of your waste can just go straight into this category. This is your fruit peels, vegetables, meats, bones, some amount of garden waste, all of that. 
The second category is what we consider dry waste. So this can get plugged into the informal recycling systems that we have the world over. Please put this kind of waste into this bag. Now the third one is reject waste. So now I'm really talking to the women who use the bathroom, dispose of sanitary napkins. Some of you have kids at home, you use diapers. All of this is considered reject waste. This should go into the red bin. Very, very exciting is that we had a pioneering city in Bangalore, which has 8 million people, is about the fifth largest city in India, and decided to make segregation at source mandatory by law in 2012. And let me tell you, they're very, very serious about this. Why? Because we know restaurants who have been fined almost 1.5 lakhs, which is a little over $2,200, and they've been shut for a week because they did not segregate their waste. Very exciting. So, they went forward with segregation at source. They also did a second thing. They required, they, they, they very quickly realized that they did not have the capacity to be able to serve all the waste producers in the city. So they mandated that most uh, large apartment complexes and businesses should move their processing of organic waste on site. The city even went ahead and started inviting biogas companies to come and set up plants. This is one such plant. It takes about five tons of organic waste on a daily basis. So let's take a step back and look at how pioneering Bangalore actually was because it installed 125 tons of processing capacity. It has about 500 tons in the pipeline, effectively allowing 27% of its organic waste to go into energy. It also mandated segregation at source. It asked residents and large businesses to start helping out and managing either waste on site or using private resources to, to deal with their waste scientifically. But somehow, this is still not working. Why is that? So you have less than 5% of the city segregating their waste right now. Why is this? The biggest thing we found as a problem was that no one was talking to each other. There was absolutely no technology. As I mentioned earlier, you had, three, you, you had three aspects that you needed to cover, but you only had two. So you have the destinations, you have people who produce waste who are willing to segregate it, but you don't have a way to get the right kind of waste to those facilities. And that's where our company came in. We invented this system more as a network and a platform so that we can work with every kind of generator to ensure that they have a system to maintain segregation within their own facility. We then dispatch collectors to take every single waste stream that can be recycled to the right kind of facility and there's tracking throughout. So what you actually do is not just segregate your waste, but take responsibility for knowing where it is going and what became of it. And this is what our customers today will be able to produce in this year. We have data generated at every single transfer on both the quality and the quantity of waste, without which you cannot manage the system at scale. We were able to make segregation at source a reality. You have what mixed waste looks like on one side and what segregated waste looks like on the other. You can actually take all of that organic waste and feed it directly into a plant, into a biogas plant. You do not need to do any more segregation. We manage operations in real time. This required us to take all of the existing collectors who were there but build hardware and mobile applications that even low literate populations could use to be directed to the right spot, to be able to give feedback when something goes wrong, and to be able to allow us to change gears in real time based on how much waste was being produced at a particular point. This was our first victory. We started feeding this biogas plant, which now lights up this entire park. We started when this plant was getting less than 200 kgs of waste in a day. 
Today, it gets more than 4,000 kgs and is very close to fulfilling its five tons capacity. It is fed by restaurants in its neighborhood. So, since October of 2015, we have had over 100 businesses, over 2,000 households, and 10 collectors join this network. And together, they have diverted over 1,000 tons of waste from landfills and converted it instead into energy, compost, and recycled products. A lot of people ask us what made these customers join our network. And I have to tell you, we know they, they, they're really not like customers, they're more like community champions. They were people who went door to door to get their neighbors to sign up. They hosted a lunch where 35 restaurant owners showed up in a neighborhood to make sure that they could help us fill at least one truck. They paid us triple what they were paying their current collector to make sure as a young company we could survive. Most importantly, they stood by us when the local health inspector came threatening them with fines because they had joined a new system. And I also got dogs to ensure my personal safety. But really, what we learned from our customers was that business owners and citizens in India are excited about providing a model for the world to follow. They believe that it is possible to form the foundation of recycling economies and they are willing to participate in a system that will work, a system that will yield results. And I believe that we can make this platform a global platform. At a time when the world is divided and fighting over the access to resources, we want this platform to break boundaries and be a connector to bring people together who want to create recycling networks in their own communities. All we need are three ingredients to scale. The first one, of course, is policy. We must have governments support segregation at source and invite investment and cooperation from the private sector in order to have clean energy, in order to have real-time operations. Destinations. We are so excited about providing this model to invite further investment into the waste to energy sector, which has been rather ignored in the conversation on renewable energy. We solve their supply chain problem, their raw material problem, which is what they need in order to continue investing. And third is technology. I stand here today ready to commit our efforts to any city in the world that wants to bring in the concept of recycling economies. Technology is absolutely scalable, and that is what we're here to do. So the only question I have is, are you in a position to start participating in recycling economies? Thank you.